straightforward, right? So all it is is you got yourself your little receiver and it sends a signal to the receiver. Okay. Sorry, this we'll call it your transmitter. How about that? We'll just keep it nice and easy so I don't confuse everybody with all these big technical words that GM uses for it. So what you got here is your transmitter, okay? And its range is roughly 25 feet, right? So I can be standing 25 feet away. The signal will be sent, as soon as I push the button on this, the signal will be sent from the transmitter to that little black box. We'll call it a receiver, okay? It'll then send a signal to whatever you're pushing the button for. Now, let's say for example, we want to unlock our doors. Okay, so now when I push this button, it'll send a signal to the power door lock switch. Usually, it'll start off with the driver's one first. And if you press it simultaneously, if you press it twice, it'll unlock all doors. Some vehicles back in the day only had three buttons. This guy here has four. My additional function that I can control on the vehicle is turn on the interior lights. What it'll do is it'll send a signal to a relay and then the relay signal will go from there up until the interior lights and it's a time delay. So all I have to do is push that button, lights will come on. Now it'll be on a time delay, it'll go off in about 10 seconds or so. So, what you're going to want to do is locate where your receiver is. Most of them are in the trunk. There are some that are in the, under the dash. You'll find it. Mine is located behind this panel. Okay, so you got yourself a nut here. I believe the owner uh, with the problems had a 94 DeVille. As I recall, don't quote me on it. So you might have to remove some trim. Okay. There's little nuts and bolts and everything else in place. There's one over here. Okay. Don't be afraid, just go in there, start ripping and tearing stuff apart. Alright. We got another one here. There's three, four, I'm counting four. So, what you're going to want to do is undo all of them. And you'll find your receiver. Okay, so once you've successfully removed those four little um, clip bolts, like this guy here, Okay, go ahead and pull down the carpeting. Okay, so let's say for example you just removed your trim piece in the trunk, you're in there with your fob, you're trying to see if you can hear anything clicking, don't automatically assume that the receiver is done just because you don't hear anything. There's a good chance that it just needs to be reprogrammed. Here's how you're going to do that. What you're going to want to do is locate a black wire going to the receiver. Okay, it's usually, it comes out of the wire harness from the trunk and you'll see it, there's a whole bunch of wires there for it. Now. What you're going to want to do is try to unplug that wire from the wire harness. Don't start cutting wires. Not good. So once you try and achieve unplugging that wire from the wire harness, get yourself a, about three feet or even two feet of ordinary automotive wire. Two feet should be lots. And what you're going to want to do is attach the black wire to your extension lead and ground it. As soon as you ground it to something steel inside the trunk, what's going to happen immediately, the power door locks are going to start to function. They're going to lock and then unlock. You've got to make sure that the key is in the ignition when you do this. Also, if something goes wrong, make sure you have your driver's door open or at the very least, the window down. Okay. If something goes wrong, you're going to be locked out and you're going to have your keys in the ignition. Normally with GM vehicles, even of this era, you couldn't lock the doors with the key in the ignition. It wouldn't operate. But once you start, once you ground, ground that wire out, it's going to override all that. The 
power door locks are going to operate, even with the key on, and you could be locked out even with the key in the ignition. Make sure you have your spare set handy. That works too. So, what you're going to want to do, get yourself about two feet of extension wire and ground it. Once you achieve this, your power door locks are going to start to function. Now, you're going to want to keep your fob or transmitter handy. You're going to want to make sure, take it off your key ring entirely, and you're going to want to make sure that you hit the unlock button. Once you do that, your power door locks are going to start to unlock and lock again. Then what you're going to have to do, is to, if you have two fobs or two transmitters, you're going to want to do the same to the other one. Make sure you hit the unlock button on that one as well. If you only have one fob, you're going to have to do it twice to the one fob that you do have, or the one transmitter. If you do this properly, and you do it within 30 seconds, everything will work fine. The power door locks will work, your power trunk release, release will work as well. But you only have 30 seconds to do it, or you'll have to unplug your ground wire, wait a few minutes, and do this again. You only have a 30 second time frame to do it. Plenty of time. Just make sure that your key is in the run position, and that you have your wire properly grounded. You don't want it to fall off on you, so try and make it quick. Try and make sure it's grounded good. And what's going to happen immediately after you ground that wire, your power door locks are going to lock and unlock. And right there, have the fob inside the trunk with you when you do this. Hit the unlock button, and then wait. It'll lock the doors, and then unlock the doors, and then do it again. After that, it should work. So now with that task done, maybe you got lucky, maybe it worked for you. If you didn't get lucky, and it's not working for you, after the third or fourth try, you might have to do some more investigating. I will give you this little bit of information. I do have service repair manuals from the 90s for various GM vehicles. Every year, and every model, produced by General Motors, technology advanced year by year. Okay, so there are different programming instructions when it comes to these. Um, I believe the 95 and the 96 DeVille, all the way up to 98, uh, virtually are the same uh, routine in order to reprogram your receiver inside your trunk. As I recall, anyway, if it doesn't work for you, do some investigating first. You've changed your battery, you've changed your fob, maybe you bought a new fob, inspect to see if your buttons are wore out. If they are, well then you got yourself a problem, you're going to have to replace your fob. If you buy a new fob, for example, and you still can't seem to figure out what is going on, there's a good chance that your receiver might not be functioning properly, and you might have to get a new one. Nine times out of ten, you'll never have that problem. I've never had that problem. Usually it's something very simple. After about a year, if the fob is not in use and the battery goes dead, you might have to reprogram the fob. You might. If the battery in the car has been left out for any longer than six months, there's a good chance that you're going to have to reprogram it. So if your car sits for a long period of time with no battery in it, or the battery is dead and you just have the car parked in a field somewhere, there are people like that, there's a good chance that you'll have to reprogram it. Very easy to do, all you have to do is find the black wire. I'm not going to keep this video running any longer than what it has to. All the information is in the description box down below, all you have to do is read it. Every year there was a little bit of changes with these, as technology moved on. And it varies from car manufacturer to car manufacturer. GM, Ford, Dodge all have their different routines and all have their different locations for the receivers. GM has theirs in the trunk. Oldsmobile actually had one in under the dash. My uh, old 88 had it. It is located under the dash. But with the Cadillac DeVille, it is in, in the trunk. You'll have to remove some trim pieces and you'll have to find the black ground wire and you'll have to go from there. Anybody else have any questions, feel free to ask. But eventually you will get it. If you don't get it, feel free to comment. I'll try and help you out the best I can. I do have repair service manuals for various GM vehicles through the 80s and 90s. Newer vehicles into the 2000s and 2010s, I really can't help you with. I can try, but, you know, newer vehicles today, they really never ever have a problem. The only explanation I can think of 
regarding why a key fob or a transmitter doesn't work is because the battery has been left out of the vehicle for too long. More than likely, if you just bought your car and you bought it used, the previous owner might have stored the car, took the battery out of the car, and left it sit for longer than six months. If that is the case, well that's the reason why your fob doesn't work. And normally a simple reprogramming will fix the job. If not, feel free to comment. I'll try and help you out the best I can. Oh, wrong button.